Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar today with Cloud Academy. My name is Stefano Bellasi. I'm CEO and co-founder of cloudacademy.com, and I'm here with Giacomo Marinangeli, CTO and co-founder. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, it's kind of a special webinar because we usually don't do these webinars together, uh, but today we would love to introduce you to the Cloud Academy platform. And as usual, uh, we're going to see a demo, but I, I do have a few slides that I want to start with. The reason why you should stick with us today is mostly because we're going to see the entire platform, so the end user component and the enterprise components, and also because I think we do have you know, some new uh, listeners that are from the UK. Thank you for our partnership with uh, QA uh, that is now in partnership with cloudacademy.com. So with that being said, let me start on why uh, cloud skills are so important. So one thing that we usually see is that no matter the platform, no matter the vendor you select to start your cloud journey, what really matters at the end of the day to succeed in the cloud are skills, right? So the skills that your team have and the skills that you build in that team are really the ones that are going to make your project successful. And Cloud Academy is really about this. So as you can see, what we build is a digital skill management platform that is mostly dedicated to enterprise companies. And really what we focus on is making sure that we do build skills in the organization, starting with an initial assessment and then moving up to a constantly measurable uh, way of improving that skills. So in this image, and you will have a chance to see how all of this works uh, in a few minutes with Giacomo, but in this, in this chart, you can actually see how we measure uh, how skills are growing inside an organization in a very constant way, measuring across different providers, across different technologies, and really providing insights to the management team uh, every single day. So what's Cloud Academy? Um, Cloud Academy is the perfect mix of content and technology. So if you think about Cloud Academy, what we specialize on is really building skills on cloud technology at scale. And the way we do that is basically combining a big set of software that we provide to our users and a big set of content that we do provide on several different vendors. If I start with the product, the platform, there are several areas that we cover. So there is measurement, there is prescription and practice, and customization and control. So you should think of Cloud Academy as something that is probably very different from the usual e-learning platform that you get access to, just because we do focus on making sure that we assess uh, people's skills when they join the program, when they join the platform. And then from there, we basically deliver training with hands-on labs, with video courses, with quizzes and exams. So it's a very interactive experience that on one side uh, really helps the user uh, getting something exciting as a learning experience where you know it can build things, you can test these skills constantly. But on the other side, it's also something that is pretty powerful for the organization, for our customers, because that's um, really about enabling them to customize our content, to understand what are the insights in their training, and really take control of everything that happens inside their teams. So they can onboard their teams, they can modify the content or they can add their own proprietary content and combine the content uh, with our library. And then they can have custom control and custom visibility of what's happening inside the platform. On the other side, if I think about the content, uh, that's really a huge library, right? And I'll show you that in, in our demo. But we do cover thousands of technologies in the cloud, starting with the vendors like AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud and moving to topics and job roles that are very familiar for the ones of us that, are, that have been working in the cloud industry. So you should think about things like containers, microservices, but also things that are more you know, under the big umbrella of cloud, like machine learning or AI, and even you know, job roles like devil professional or a full stack developer, where we do offer our users also content that is more on programming languages or you know, building machine learning systems. So it's a huge library, and the peculiarity about the library is the fact that we do build new content every, basically every week. So we, we do ship new content every week. Uh, it might be a lab, it might be a new learning path, it might be a new exam. But at the same time, as you know, this, this industry is changing so rapidly 
then you know we do have to update that content as well. So usually, and uh, I'd love to have here uh, our VP of content, Andrew Larkin, but uh, we do tend to update our content within two weeks whenever we have something new. Like imagine that AWS uh, is updating their certification paths. Cloud Academy is usually able to update all of that within two weeks from the release. So pretty, pretty fast. With that being said, uh, what Jaco and I would love to do today is basically focusing on a full demo of the platform. I'm going to cover the initial set that is mostly on the end user capabilities, and then is going to focus on everything else that is the management capabilities of the platform, including a deep dive on technologies like skill assessments and hands on labs. Give me a second to move to uh, my browser. Okay, you should be able to see my screen. In this case, I'm logged in as a, as a company, as an admin of a company. But as you can see, this is basically the dashboard of Cloud Academy. As soon as you join Cloud Academy as an end user, as a team member, imagine that you're inviting someone into the platform for your company. Uh, you can basically start assessing that uh, team skills, right? So the very first thing that you get is uh, initial exam that can be customized or you know can be picked uh, for each single vendor, and you start basically assessing your skill. At the same time, you do have already maybe a training plan that is assigned, and I'll come back to it in a second. You have your activity. So in this case, I do have several things that have been starting in Cloud Academy. I do have an overview of the content that I completed already in the platform. And also, I do have the ability to discover new things, right? That's my dashboard, and as you can see, I do have an idea of my skill score. So it's basically how good I am with, with, with cloud technologies in general. Uh, Jacob will explain a bit more how that works. And also the number of activities, really you know, the number of uh, learning paths or courses or exams that I've completed. Now, before I dive deep into uh, some content, I want to show you the main way you can navigate Cloud Academy through our library. So the library is actually a pretty uh, big number of content that we do have across several categories. You can navigate them by vendor, for example, Amazon Book Services. And in this case, I'll have more than 300 items. I can start you know, with things that have been suggested for certifications or things that are suggested to migrate to something like Amazon Book Services. Or you know, I can say, well, I want to see just the labs that are available for Amazon Web Services. And the same is true for things like Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, but as you can see also for categories that are not strictly related to cloud, but that we still think are somehow fundamental for users that are approaching cloud computing today. And an example might be Python or Java, for example. Now, that's, of course, you know, a way to navigate our content. The other way, as I told you, is really uh, using our using our training plans. So whenever I start using Cloud Academy inside a company, let me uh, go to my dashboard. I usually do have a training plan that gets assigned to me, and the training plan is really a prescribed path that I need to use to start learning about something. And the best way to keep learning with something is really click resume, for example. And in this case, I'll go to a learning path inside Cloud Academy where I can see several different things, right? In this case, as you can see, I've already completed 96% of this learning path. So the moment I click resume, I'll go to the first uh, thing that I haven't completed yet, that is basically uh, the last course in this learning path. Or I can jump into one of these items and really give you an idea of what the learning experience looks like. Like in this case, I completed this one, but I can go to the next one, for example. And as you can see, in this case, I'm inside a lab. And what I can do is basically start the lab. Jacqueline will show you how all of this works. And once I completed this lab, I can move to the next step, for example. So you don't have just learning paths. You don't have just courses, but you have also exams. So for example, in this case, I can go to the last one. And as you can see, I have 35 questions, 33 minutes. Uh, that is the average duration. I can start the assessment and really get a final score selecting a few questions. I'm now picking random 
when the man starts, as you can see. But the idea is basically that once I complete all of these, I can go back to my learning path and really get the final certificate of completion. Now, let me show you for a second how the training plans work. Because before I was acting as an end user, so I was basically consuming that content inside Cloud Academy. But what I can do here is really assign training plans to, um, to my team. So let's assume that we onboarded already a few people. This is a demo account. So all the people that you have seen, that you can see here, are, you know, fake accounts. Uh, in this case, I have all, almost uh, 1,000 people. I can go to teams. And as you can see, I basically created a bunch of teams, like developers on AWS, uh, Argentina operations, or people that are assigned to AWS Solutions Architect. And then I can go to a training plan. And really, a training plan is a prescribed set of content that my team needs to consume. So in this case, I can either select an existing training plan, or I could even you know, get a one based on role-based role training plans, so based on a job role, or I could even create a new training plan based on my, on my needs. What I'm going to do here is really getting something on fundamentals on AWS, assign this to a team. And here I can pick, for example, you know, developers on Azure. Let's say that I want to give my people some skills about AWS, even if they're folks on, on Azure. I can decide to exclude people that are probably team managers. So the system allows me to be quite selective about all of that. And then the next uh, option is really about the hourly commitment for this team. So I can do two things here. The training plan, I can say, needs to be completed by October 3rd, for example, 2019. And I can select you know, the number of hours. Uh, like in this case, I can select three hours. And as you can see, the system adjusts uh, the uh, final deadline based on the duration, based on how long is the training plan. Or as I was doing before, I can pick a single day. Like it's going to be done by January 2020. And in this case, I can also include what's the objective of this training plan. And in this case, I can say, well, it's going to be about training or Azure upstream on AWS fundamentals, right? This is important because whenever someone inside a company is going to look at the results of this training plan, they know exactly why you assigned this training plan and why you are uh, basically building that. So the nudges is another uh, functionality that is pretty powerful. Uh, the training plan is, is really built to make sure that users are constantly training themselves, constantly reaching the deadlines that they are supposed to reach. And so the nudges are built to remind them that they need to complete at least you know, some hours a week to really be on track with that level. With that, that. I click review, and you know, I do have uh, a recap of the training plan. We can commit them at 45 minutes, uh, more than 100 days, and the due date being January 2020. Confirm and assigned. And in this case, all my people in that team are going to receive a new training plan in their dashboard. They're going to receive a few email communication, and they're now involved in that training plan. The way it looks like, like let's take another one, for example, machine learning for data engineers. You can see that I do have all the people inside a training plan. I can see where they are exactly, their progress. I can see what has been their average exam score. I can see what's the last time that they logged into the platform and they did something. And I can also see if they're ahead or behind, meaning like if there is someone behind, I can probably click nudge and just send a single communication to that person. Or I could even do the bulk nudge. And so I'm going to select all the people that didn't start the, the training plan or all the people that are behind. In this case, we don't have any. Or you know, I can simply. Uh, select all these people, review and confirm, and I can personalize the message. So automatically, they will get a message from the team manager, so from me with my name, and they will read all of that to uh, be updated on, on, on our progress. At the same time, you have all the steps inside a uh, training plan. So in this case, you have three different things, three different learning paths inside this. 
and you can even configure specific things. So at any point in time, I can deactivate uh, the nudges, right, with a simple click. I can extend the due date of that training plan. So I might realize that my people have been involved with more projects than when I wanted, and so I'll extend the due date, or I can mark this training plan as complete, or I can even delete this training plan if my planes change. The other peculiar thing about a platform is that at, at any point in time, as I told you at the very beginning, I can get insights on what's happening inside a platform. Now, insights are basically two different things for us. I can look at analytics in my platform so I can see exactly um, how many activities have been completed, uh, how much time spent we have inside the platform, how many unique users. But I can also look at skills, like you know, what other skills, what is the uh, level of skills that we have inside our organization. And that's something that Giacomo will cover in a few minutes. Here, I wanted to show you that I can click on a category like courses. I'll go to a specific course and I can see the number of people involved, how many courses they started, if they completed that or not. I can see this by single users or by teams, for example, right? So, and I know uh, the number of people involved. And I can also see a chart that basically recaps all of this. The same thing happens for other learning activities, like for an exam, uh, and this one is particularly interesting, I do have all the details for every single exam. So for every single person, I can basically go and check how many times they uh, completed that exam, uh, how many times they passed that exam, and what's the last score. So uh, were they successful or weren't they successful? Same thing for the 10. Now, the beauty about a platform is that you can get access to all these data through the management dashboard, right? First of all, and here I didn't show you, but you can select different time frames, as you can imagine. You can compare things with one thing to the other, but you can also download all this data or get access to APIs to all of this, right? So I can download the training activity uh, either as a CSV or as an XLS, or you know I can look at the member usage summary in the very same way, always selecting a specific time frame. Uh, I can now show you here the um, APIs. I can quickly go here to setting and integrations, but basically Cloud Academy allows you to generate new keys, and at that point you can easily get access to what we call LMS APIs that give you access to all the data inside inside your um, inside your account. With that being said, let me um, pass all of this to Giacomo so he can show you a bit more about the other functionalities for managers and for enterprise companies inside our management dashboard. Thank you, you go, Giacomo. Thank you. Um, so that being said, uh, we are still looking at the management dashboard. I'm still the administrator of a company, in this case, Acme Corporation. And what you're looking at is the skill profile tool that we built to give you administrators a real-time insight about skills and the trend inside the company. Uh, at the top of the page, you see actually uh, you see the top platform that have been um, uh, studied by the company, the, the, the company, the employees uh, among all the teams that you you create inside the company. And as you can clearly see, AWS is one of the platform on top, and uh, is followed by Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. On the right side, you can see how that those skills. Uh, are distributed across all the teams and the people. You can also look at um, how, how big, uh, how complex, um, sorry, how advanced is the knowledge about those vendors uh, that can be more advanced or, or, big, or for beginners. At the, at the bottom of the page, you actually see how those trends, how, how those skills change over time. You can look since the very beginning of when these companies are using Cloud Academy to till today. And you can change the time window and look at a different time window. And of course, you can also look at the very single items and together with that, the overall of the company. And the overall, consider a lot of information and a lot of knowledge graph nodes. That is actually how we build this aggregated value for the overall. And when I, when I said nodes, I mean that in addition to this platform, there are a lot of more information that you can look at together, uh, together with the platforms. One is domain, because we, we map all our content to different domains, different platform, 
con concepts, software and tool. So you can actually browse and navigate through all these, uh, this big graph of information and look how that changed over time and how it's distributed across all the company. It might be helpful also to tell um, our, our users in the webinar that all of this is basically based on a knowledge graph. So it's something that is absolutely dynamic. Every time we do add new content, we basically map that content to specific skills or we let our enterprise customers add in skills. So every time someone is completing a question or someone is completing even a lab inside a platform, they basically get new skills or they lose skills based on their, um, on their results. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Stefano. And we actually give a score to each node of this graph yeah. to let administrators and manager quickly understand how good is my company, how good are my employees. And the value that you can see on top here uh, is actually the representation, the average representation of the entire, of the entire company. It might be not really meaningful if you look at the overall, but it gives you really a quick idea if it's something is going to be if it's good or if it's not improving at all. And we, we wanted to show you the growth rate so you have a much better understanding if something is improving inside your company so you actually immediately see the return of investment we call that. Kind of yeah, we usually, we usually use this type of approach with large organizations. So for example, we've been working for more than a year with a very famous technology uh, company in the US, a very multinational company. And they've been using Cloud Academy to really up level their skills uh, across almost a thousand people on AWS and Azure. And we did a review with them and what they observed was that they've been growing more than 500% in their AWS skills in the last 12 months. So that's the type of insights that we are able to deliver. At that point, there are two things that are quite important for them. First of all, you know, they understand that they do have a return on investment for their for their um, training. But second, and even more important, they do dive deep into insights, right? So they understand exactly what are the teams that have been studying the most and what are the teams that actually have the best skills. And that, of course, as you can imagine, enable all sorts of scenarios like I can build a new team based on that skills, or you know, I can assign people to internal projects based on that type of skills. And that's, of course, you know, something that is invaluable uh, from, a, from a strategic perspective for most of our customers. Now, the, 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 the good thing about all of this is actually that is is in real time. So every day you basically have new numbers, you have you know new insights on your organization. Yes, actually every hour. So right. as soon as the students complete a, a, a learning unit, we update his score and the score of his team and the score of the company. So actually it's everything, uh, everything up to date. And uh, as Stefano mentioned uh, a few seconds ago, you can actually, uh, Deep, deeper into the uh, knowledge graph and if you are not just simply interested in AWS but you're more interested in how, how the company is performing with the security you can actually go through that specific topic and domain and look all the services and be sure actually that maybe if you are really interested in a specific service you can actually understand how good the company is about that about that tool and if you if you want to look at a specific team because you are in particular, really interested on a, on, a, on a team, you can actually just look at that team and do all the segmentation that I showed you before using that, just on uh, looking at that team. For example, the Argentina uh, operations team is actually really just focused on AWS, as you can see from the graph. Now, now that I show you how you can browse the skill profiles, I'd love to, to move the conversation to the content engine. The content engine is a tool that we create to give you the possibility to fully customize the content that we created originally and add your own content on top of what we provide to you and to, the, uh, to your students. So from the content engine that is actually linked here in the uh, dash, um, management dashboard, you can access the the, this control center that lets you create all the resources that are listed here. Uh, I'll drop you to show you to show how to create and manage uh, most of these resources. And let me start with the with the questions. Questions are the the smallest items, the item the item of uh, an exam. So before creating an exam, of course, you need to create and custom and, and manage 
uh, uh, questions and of course again you can you can use the, the questions that we create over time that we keep updated every every month every week uh, but also you can create your own and I, just for an example let me show you how to create one question very easy uh, about S3 for example uh, one uh, very easy and, and basic question can be um, what's the largest object you can upload to S3 with a single put operation. And then uh, as very, very similar to a lot of other uh, quizzes tool that students are familiar with, you, you just provide a few options like five, five gigabytes, that is correct answer, uh, five megabytes, megabyte, five, and so on. Sorry, kilobyte, and you, if the if the question has more than one correct answer, you can do that. So you can have also multiple answers. The students can provide or uh, must provide all the correct answer to to answer correctly the question. You can also add other possible answer, but just for the, in this case we won't do that for simplicity. Uh, of course, it's important, and we saw that over time, to give not only the right answer, but the reason why that answer is correct. And so we usually uh, focus on looking at the right and the most updated documentation. And in this case, I'd love to provide something that I get from the FAQs from AWS S3. So that as soon as they answer that question, they are gonna see why that specific question, is, why specific, that specific answer is correct. And uh, it's also it's also a way to learn, right? So yes. Most of our most of our users actually really like this system because they can on one side answer a question and right after that they learn something about it, right? So that's that's really a bite-sized way of consuming content. And one of the most important things that you, you're gonna see me do for every content that we are going to create is to um, attach this specific piece of content to the knowledge graph. That would be absolutely helpful when the student is going to answer this question, if, in, if he could answer correctly, he's going to get some uh, improvement with the score about S3 because I just connected this question to that to the knowledge graph node. This is how it works. We map content to the knowledge graph and then we map the skills to the knowledge graph as well. So we are going to exactly know uh, what is the uh, knowledge exactly of those students. Uh, I can attach more than one uh, skill, for example, uh, storage. It can be overall, or can then uh, specifically uh, talk about uh, the vendor. Now, uh, I can, of course, set the difficulty. This is very easy, so let's move on to the uh, and save. And then as soon as I save, uh, the, the, the question is in draft, so there can be someone else inside the company that can help me review and then publish the question. And then, of course, I can publish the question for everybody. Now, uh, now that I publish the question, I can go to exams and create a new exam. I can either clone from an existing exam if I want to uh, save some time, but just for uh, the webinar, I will try to build something from scratch. I'll be quick. My exam. I try to put Acme in front of every uh, content so that it would be easier for me to see that later uh, during this webinar. We don't need a very meaningful description at the moment, but uh, we, of course, um, suggest you to put everything that is pretty clear for the customer, for the students, exam cover. So you can add a customization of the look and feel of the library. And uh, you can put this inside a specific category for, for the library. So user, when they will browse the library, they will find everything uh, under the same category that you, you decided to put this exam into. Again, uh, I can do a connection to a skill objective. I can set the exam duration, the number of questions, uh, let's let, let keep this exam much easier. So let's we adjust 10 questions. And so the minimum score that I want to be uh, achieved by the students to consider this pass, to, to consider this exam passed. Uh, as a, an additional uh, advanced settings, you can also create multiple area inside this, uh, this exam where we can divide all the question by 
uh, micro era, like for example, I mean, EPNF storage. Maybe one at a time. So now, in addition to general, I also have an area in this exam that is about storage, and then I can decide how many questions I want specific to this uh, topic here. So let's say I'm going to do 50% and 50% for generic questions. And then also, I can have different kind of minimal score required to pass the exam for each session. So uh, let's say the storage is less important or more important, I can change the value. And I, I might say that I need at least 50% of correct answer to pass the exam for general questions, and at least 67% for storage questions. And then I can also change the algorithm to give the final score to the user. I can be very hard in giving minus one for one answer or the easy one where we do not penalize the user for wrong answer. And this is up to you if you want to customize it. And then uh, I can go up and, uh, and save the exam. Now, uh, the second part is, of course, selecting the content, in this case, question. And I should use something, uh, I should put something in, uh, related to search for the first area. And the first one is the, the question that I just created. So I can use my own question and then add other question about the street. I can look for inside our content library. Three, four, and five. We said there should be five storage and five general. So I'm good with storage and I'll look something that is more generic for the other the other area. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're good. And now that I created like the question, uh, it's been created in uh, draft mode. And the status is draft and, 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 and they can publish now for everybody inside the company. Again, when we publish something, that means that it was going to be available for my company and my company only, in addition to the content that we as Cloud Academy created for you. So any content that you publish will be only assigned to your company, won't be pu uh, public and visible to anybody else. Uh, after the, the exam, I'll drop to spend a, a couple of minutes on the custom resources. That is something that is really, really requested by most of our customers is the possibility to add content that is not provided previously from Cloud Academy, a, a different kind of type of content, for example, PDFs, videos, or uh, Microsoft Word documents. So you can actually upload anything that is usually used as a, uh, a learning document. Uh, here you can see the supported files at the moment. The most common is PDF. So let me upload a PDF file here. I choose to upload the S3 official developer guide that I got from AWS. And I, I suppose that it's more natural to upload something that is really related to your daily job or something that is internal at your company. For example, a, a policy that is related to the security of your, company, your policy of your company. So something that it's not usually able to find uh, outside. Okay. To me, S3 developer guide. Let me choose an image as usual. And then a very quick description. And again, skill objective connected to this content. And publish. Now, before putting everything together uh, into um, a learning path, I'd love to, to spend the last uh, couple of minutes on uh, creating a laboratory. This is one of the most complicated things uh, that we offer. It's uh, more than complicated, it's actually, um, it lets you really rebuild an entire uh, production environment or stage environment inside Cloud Academy using the very, the, the very same AWS or Azure or Google Cloud Platform environments. So that students and, 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 and members of your company that needs to be trained on those uh, vendors is going to use the same exact environment that they use on production. Uh, let me choose the vendor first and create a new laboratory. 
so the numbers I want to create, of course, is about S3. So how to create a bucket with AWS S3. And now you can reuse something that is pretty, pretty common from, from our mark, lab, catalog of, of um, laboratory steps. The first step usually is the, the step that tells the user how to log in into AWS, what is AWS and how to use it. So we, we create something that you can reuse as well. Instead of explaining the user with this tutorial on how to log in, we actually provided that for you. And we have a lot of steps that can, you can reuse and fully customize. So if you want to change something into the description, adding images, if you want to add a side note, you can do that as well. And in this case, I want to create something on S3. So let's look for the, the items that is ready to uh, S3 bucket on how to create an S3 bucket. As you can see, you can rearrange the steps inside the lab. And as I said before, you can customize it with a, with a custom description. When I, when I save something that I changed from the catalog, it will be saved just for me and it won't be able to be accessed by anybody else. And you will see a custom flag here that actually highlight that part. Uh, of course, I can also create step from, from scratch without having to start from a, a previous one. Now I go to the second tab that is needed to be to provide the difficulty as usual, how much time uh, the student should, be, should spend on this lab. It's pretty easy, so I would say just 30 minutes. I'm going to put this under, as usual, uh, a category inside the library, uh, new resources, and then again, the skill objectives, S3. I can choose, as usual, the lab cover, so you, you can see that the approach to customization is the same for every piece of content that we have. So you won't be feel, you won't feel lost when you change all these uh, all these items. Uh, the last tab is the provisioning. Uh, a provisioning template is actually a, a real vendor uh, template resource. If you if you talk about AWS, we are talking about cloud formation. So you can use our laboratory technology to automatically create resources inside the lab to be used by the student to achieve their goals. So if you want a student to use multiple EC2 instances, connect all of them together inside the same load balancer, and then you want to uh, connect to an RDS database, you can put all the items inside the environment, all the EC2 instance, uh, instances at the RDS database, and then you can ask the student to connect all of them. That will save a lot of time to the student. We won't be, we won't be um, forced to create all the resources by hand every time. And you can actually uh, do actually whatever you want. We, we provide this template for every vendor that we support, AWS, Azure, Google. So you can actually ask uh, the platform to create everything that you need uh, in, in your use case. And you, you can use the one that we provide to you for as an example and of course you can create from scratch as well we manage the provisioning and the, the cleaning of every resource that the our technology creates on bootstrap but also all the resources created by the student you won't need to manage credential accounts permission we do everything automatically for you uh, for this kind of laboratory, we don't need any provision into place, so let's say without it, and as usual, we publish it for, for everybody. Action and publish. One last step before we, uh, we finish with this part of the webinar is to putting all the content together inside a, a, a learning pad. Uh, this time, uh, just for uh, saving some time, I won't start from scratch. I know there are a lot of good a very good uh, learning path about storage or S3. So I will look for something that already exists. Let me search for S3. Oh, okay. I know this one. Uh, John created this for assessment about S3. So let me start here from that. And automatically, uh, the entire um, um, content engine, uh, sorry, the entire uh, learning path page here will be populated with the information coming from that learning path. And as usual, I can customize everything. For example, starting from the cover, but also I can change the title, adding a prefix or any customization that I want to make to this 
uh, tablet um, learning pads. Let's move, move next to the next tab where we can customize the content. As you can see, this learning pad is, is mainly quizzes, so we can rearrange them if we don't like the original order, or of course we can add to the content that we just created. I would start with the custom resources. So let's go to resources and add to the S3 development guide, content selection, and I will put this on top. And also I'd love to add a laboratory, the one that we just created, and the exam. So that's content. We have rearranged the, uh, it's better to leave the exam at the very end and save. Save and as usual, publish. Now we just created a lot of content. We started with the, quiz, with the questions, we put that in a, an exam, we created a laboratory, we created a customer source uploading our own files, and then we put everything together inside our learning pad that we created from the one that we already had in the, in the content library. So if I now go to the library, you'll see the learning pad that I just customized. Of course, there are a lot of other content that is going to be published every day. So you can see Acme Corporation content, you see new this month coming from the library, from Carl Academy, but also from, from your company. And this one is the one that I just created. And if I click here, I will see the new learning path with the, all the steps that I created, starting from the customer source, all the quizzes that were uh, they were there since the beginning, and also the hands-on labs and the exams. To complete my demonstration, let me go to the uh, hands-on labs directly and quickly show you how a lab works. Uh, the laboratory, as I said before, is uh, an, um, to, uh, a connect, connecting, uh, they connect together steps, guided steps, instructions, and the AWS environment where the student can be get familiar with the with the, with the web console, with the tools, with the, no, uh, with, the, uh, the with, with the knowledge required to use cloud vendors. And when you start a laboratory, we automatically provision access to a specific and dedicated environment that will be there for you for the entire duration of your uh, laboratory session. We provide immediately here credentials to be copied and used with a single click. You don't need to wait minutes to be ready to start using your account, but this is actually a real account. We are creating something internally, and that is immediately available for, for the students. Uh, and now the student can follow all the structure that we copied from our catalog, follow all the steps, and uh, complete the objectives, the, the goals that we set for him uh, in, in, in the guided steps. There are, and when the students finish with this laboratory, it can simply close the tabs. It doesn't need to remember to clean up all the resources, look at the, uh, at the billing if it's something that's being charged. So you can simply stop the lab and we take care of the rest. Let me also specify the fact that uh, every single lab is already included in the subscription of Cloud Academy. So really the company that buys Cloud Academy or even um, in a personal account, you get more almost 200 labs that are completely included in your account. So you, you don't have to pay anything, and you can actually start those labs over and over without really getting anything charged. Yes. Uh, to finish my demonstration, there is a, a very special type of lab that we created very recently that we called uh, Labs Challenges that is not really meant for training, but actually for real assessment. With that, I mean that we won't provide um, guided steps or instruction on how to achieve that goal. We actually provide a mission to the students. Uh, with that clear mission in mind, the user need to be able and figure out what the problem in that environment, be able to use all the skills and knowledge that he got in Cloud Academy or with his personal training and solve that issue in, in, the, team that, in the time that we put him uh, available for this uh, well-up session. Again, you will be able to access a dedicated environment. We provide some 
guidelines on how this uh, lab challenge works and what is the actually objective. And usually we provide some context to be more easy for you to understand what's happening. And then at the very end of the page, after all the uh, required steps or how this uh, challenge works, we have actually real checks. These checks here are real time uh, function that we run inside the environment that the student is using and we will evaluate and validate the work that uh, the student has done during the session. So this is a practical exam where we actually do not just validate theoretical skills, but also the practical uh, skills that the user need to, to use for uh, the achievement of, the, of this laboratory. I see this lab really great at the end of our learning pad to actually validate all the knowledge that it was able to, to get from a learning pad, but also at the beginning of this uh, um, learning journey where we actually want to assess the initial uh, amount of knowledge that the student has. Uh, to, to use the checks for the student, it's simply as clicking a button. Of course, uh, we didn't do anything, so I'm not expecting this, uh, this exam to pass. Uh, we need to connect and try to achieve and complete this laboratory it's about developer uh, tools, and we, we didn't do anything. So I'm expecting to not, uh, to not pass, but if you, if you want, um, these, uh, um, these like other AWS challenges are available for available for everybody. So you can go to cloudacademy.com and try to to accomplish that mission that is available for for everyone. Thank you. And with this, I'm I'm done with the presentation. Hopefully, you're gonna awesome. have some questions for us. Yep, we do have a lot of questions. Uh, so let's see. We have like 10 minutes left. We'll try to be very quick because. Thank you guys for all these questions. They're really appreciated. I'm going to cover all of them if possible. Um, so the first one is how much involvement uh, do we need to have in creating the training plans? Are there training plans that are out of the box or recommended based on the typical job roles? Uh, that's a great question. So the, the, the great thing about Cloud Academy is that when you start using Cloud Academy with your team, you get also assigned to a customer success team. So you really have a customer success manager that follows you in every single step. Uh, whenever you need to create a new training plan, so usually after the onboarding of your team, you will be seeing with someone that can either suggest you what are the training plans that you should select. We do have already built-in training plans inside the platform, or you can really build one based on your skills. Now, the way it works is that usually we do provide an initial assessment. So we do assess um, team skills at the very beginning. We highlight what are the skill gaps, and then we select together with our customers a training plan they should use. Uh, each single team can have multiple um, training plans, but you know at the same time, we do try to give just you know one training plan per team, make sure that they complete that one, and then they can get another one side. Um, the second question, how customizable is the platform for job roles? Can you create new job roles for a bespoke role? Another great question. So we are introducing job roles as you have seen in our platform. So even today you're basically able to select specific skills that compose a job role and really customize everything that goes in, into a job role. Training plans instigated by users themselves. How does system know which ones to prescribe? Is this from an assessment process or are courses self-selected? Great. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that this was not clear at the very beginning. Maybe I can actually use my browser to clarify this quickly. I think that's important. So let me see if I can uh, get control of my screen. Uh, great. We do have someone that is great here. Our name is Francesca, he's helping us coordinating with all of this. We do have a lot going on. Um, so in this case, as I was saying, training plan. So let's suppose that you need to start a new training plan. The first thing that you're gonna do is an assessment. So even before uh, we understand what is the training plan we wanna assign to that team, we run an, uh, an assessment of that team. And with that assessment, we basically understand what are their skills, right? Like in this case, if you look at the skill gaps, like in this case, Pre-assessment on AWS, Azure, and GCP, I know that my people are not that good at GCP. So then, based on that, 
what I can do is building a training plan or selecting a training plan and assign that training plan to fill that gaps that they have. Uh, thank you for the great question. Yes, that's something that we are trying to automate. So that's an upcoming feature. I promise that we would have uh, released some news about this. <laughs> so that's absolutely an upcoming feature that we're building to the platform to really automate this step. So being able to assess someone's skills and having Cloud Academy assigned automatically training. Um, Microsoft exams, for example, AZ uh, 410, 411, and 412 are about 113 uh, pounds each. Does this mean that as a CA delegate can see those exams a few times over just based on their user license fee, or do they have to pay extra per exam? I actually answered that question before while Giacomo was presenting, but uh, just uh, for everyone. So Cloud Academy has content that prepares you for the exams, for the certifications, but in fact, you still need to go and sit for the exam. You still need to go and pay uh, a micro center to, to, to get that exam done. Can you go through a typical use case and explain where and how Cloud Academy can support the business objectives? Uh, thank you, Luke, for, for this great question. So uh, absolutely. So the, the usual use case that we work with are companies that are trying to retrain their workforce. So we do work with companies that usually have thousands of people across different departments and across different regions. Uh, the way they use Cloud Academy is very simple. So they onboard all their people, they assign them to different teams, they run an initial assessment, and then after that, they really assign them specific training plans that they can use to train them. After three months, six months, it's usually our learning, our training plan uh, works for you know uh, a few months. Then you know they check the insights, they check the results, and they assign another training plan. Now that the beauty and really the use case for them at the end of the day is really a up, up leveling all the skills inside the organization, but also understanding what are the departments, what are the people that have more skills than others, really to redirect them to specific projects or really to assign them to other departments. So it's really you know, the most common use case that we see. And another thing that I want to add is the fact that we usually work with a lot of different industries. So it's very common for us to work in the financial industry, in the manufacturing industry, but even technology is pretty popular for us. In the skill grow rate graph, can you add a target level to show a target level one is against where they are today? Uh, that's a great suggestion. That's not something that you can do today, but that's a, that's definitely something that we have in our roadmap, so it's coming. Thank you. Can this platform uh, able to provide baseline analytics and skill profiles in the organization? Is it even used in this way, or is it used as a progress measurement tool instead? Uh, great question. I think that the answer is both. So you can you can use Cloud Academy to really understand what's the baseline of knowledge inside your organization right now. Uh, as I as I just showed you in a pre-assessment, the initial assessments, so you get a pretty good understanding of what are the skills and uh, even you know, based on, on the people that are inside the, um, the pre-assessment, you get a pretty good insight. But in fact, once you start uh, giving content to your people or they start using the content, you constantly add new insights because every time they complete something, the system learns something about them and shows you that, that information. What is your typical engagement model? Uh, for example, do you help to set up and maintain the content or do you only license the platform? We do both. So really, Cloud Academy is probably the most unique platform in this space because we do build software on one side and we give you that software as a software as a service model. But at the same time, we do maintain our content lab. So whenever you start buying Cloud Academy, you, you buy Cloud Academy, uh, with a fee per, per user per year. And in that fee, you have everything included. You have the content and all the new content that we, we update or the content that we release, that we build, and also the software, right? So you get everything together. And as I, as I, as I said before, and I really like to underline that, you also get everything else included. So if you know, your users are going to consume, for example, 15,000 labs in a year, we pay for all of that. You don't have to pay any extra charge. What type of content is accessible? Interactive video, uh, text picture, or a combination? That's really a combination. So when Giacomo and I started Cloud Academy in the early days, we really wanted to build something that was really fun to use and to learn with. So we ended up building something that has videos, 
that has uh, really labs, so something where you really play, you really build something that is real inside AWS, inside Azure, inside Google, or other environments, and also something that challenges you, right? So Giacomo showed you before that now, and, and that's really something unique in the market, no other company can do something like that today. We do have labs assessment to really ask our final user, hey, show me that you can build this platform into AWS. And the system, the lab system behind Cloud Academy, behind our technology, can really verify in real time that everything that the user is doing is correct or wrong. Well. So that, that's really the type of interactiveness that you should expect from Cloud Academy. A few more questions. I know we have five minutes left. Do we have an option to use the platform on trial purposes so that we can also assess the content and material for the training? I'm assuming certification courses cover the vendor syllabus. Yes, let's start with that. Absolutely. We, our content team uh, do follow uh, the syllabus for every single certification, so you should expect something that is 100% corresponding to that. But at the same time, they also come with uh, from the field, right? So there are people with certification, there are people that have been working on cloud projects, so they do have a pretty practice knowledge about all of that. Uh, you can absolutely try Cloud Academy for free. So if you go to cloudacademy.com, you go to our pricing page. As an individual, you can start a trial, or you can even go to our um, homepage and you can see the full enterprise demo for free. So you can check that out. Now, the, the thing that I usually suggest is if you really have a team already, you should absolutely uh, get in touch, request a demo because you're gonna get connected with one of our solution engineers and they can really show you really the full demo, even with your content, and try to show you how everything works. Uh, in order to use your product, do you expect customers to have some critical level of cloud knowledge? Not really, so we design Cloud Academy for technical people, but also for non-technical people on three different levels. So we do have content that is for uh, beginners, we do have content that is for intermediate, and we have content that is for really advanced experts, right? So whenever you start using Cloud Academy, you will see that indication in each single course or in each single lab, for example, and you decide where you want to start. Um, you started by demonstrating ROI and training. How is this usually actually measured? Um, great question, and I think that's going to be the last one just because we are out of time. So we think about ROI in two different ways. The first one is about the skills that you build inside your organization. So at the end of the day, it's really about understanding what are the skills that you achieved with Cloud Academy that probably you didn't, you didn't have a year ago. And at the same time, we give you as many data as possible to consider something else in ROI. So for example, the number of activities that you completed last year or in the last six months or you know, last month even. And so you really decide what's gonna be uh, really the KPI that you wanna measure. Usually we do suggest to look at the skills because that's, that's really the best way to understand if your people really got skills and really got um, a result out of your investment with Cloud Academy. That was the last question. Uh, it's been super fun <laughs> to deliver this webinar today. Thank you for sending so many questions. Uh, definitely follow up with us. Uh, let me show you the uh, specific email address to do that in a second. So you can follow us uh, with us at sales at cloudacademy.com. If you have questions or even if you want to book a full demo or even if you want to see something that is more customizable, feel free to follow up with us. And thank you again for joining us today. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.